Hey guys, this is Frankie, CigarNews.com. I'm sitting here with Steve Saka, the CEO of Drew Estate Cigars. You guys know about this one already, but it's new for the show here. It's the Underground Corona Viva. Uh, Corona Viva is really pretty straightforward. You know, we had the Underground line come out. The blend was made by the workers because they weren't able to get enough ligas for their own smoking enjoyment. For me, the Underground's a good cigar, but it didn't have the pop or the zip that I typically like. I mean, you know, I, I like that little rock for a little coarser, a little stronger, a little less nuanced sometimes. So what I had them do is I had them make me a size that was a little bit zippier, a little bit more peppery, and it's the Corona Viva. So if you're like a Liga guy, you know, and you say, oh, the other crowd's good, but it's not a Liga, it's not quite this, not quite that, what you really need to do is you need to check out the Corona Viva, because Corona Viva, I think, is going to be your ticket to what you're looking for, and for, you know, I think it's like seven bucks or so, so it's a, it's a it's a really, really good bargain. In fact, I like the Corona Viva so much that next month I'm going to go down and I'm going to start maybe working on a Robusto Viva and a Toro Viva because I, I think I think there's enough guys that just wish it had a little bit more. You know what I mean? So we're going to take a whirl on that. The other thing we got going on in the show is this. Uh, you want to pass me that Herrera Esteli? This is a big deal to us, you know, it's a big deal to Willie Herrera, I don't know if you know Willie, yes. Willie used to work, uh, he was the master maker of Little Fabriquita on Calle Ocho called El Titan de Bronze, Willie's a, he's one tall motherfucker, but he's a hell of a good guy, and uh, you know, we brought him into the company a little over a year ago, and the idea was for him to come and create a blend, and uh, for us to help, uh, you know, get Willie more on the map, you know, it was good working on Ocho, but he was very limited. Yeah. I have to tell you, the beginning with Willie was a little rough. I think we overwhelmed him. I think, you know, in Cayocho, he was kind of like work, used to work with salt and pepper. And we popped him in the Drew Estate environment, and we had like 85 long filled traditional tobaccos for him to choose from. Wow. So, you know, from before where he was trying to make things out of two or three tobaccos, we now hit him with so much, I, I think we confused him. So, literally, if you asked me five months ago, the blends weren't going that well, to be honest with you. But he seemed to have kicked it in high gear. He hit upon a, a good stream of thought, and uh, he ended up coming up with a really, really killer blend. It's got a medium body, a little bit stronger. It's got that sweet, peppery taste. It's got a very Cuban-esque quality to it, and the cigar is exceptional. But the cigar is so good, and he took so damn long to do it, that uh, I wasn't able to bring it to the show. You know, the cigars are in the cool rooms aging, and they're just, we didn't want to bring it to the show and have people taste it when it was sick, because it wouldn't do it justice, you know? It's one thing that when the cigar's not right, or you think the cigar's right, people try it, they don't like it, that's one thing. But just trying to rush it because of some arbitrary right, right. date for a trade show, sure. it didn't make any sense to us. So right now, cigars are in the cool room. I think we're going to launch it at the end of the year, but the truth is we're going to launch it when the cigars taste right, because, you know, there's just no point in forcing it. Right. So, but this is how they're going to be packaged, and again, this is the classic Cuban quarter wheel cabinet. You know, everything about it is as authentic as we can possibly make it. You know, in fact, it's the screwed up bundle, the three on the bottom. Okay. It's the cigars packed upside down in the box. I don't know if you notice that. You know, in the United States, cigars are only packed that way. Oh, right, right. But all Cuban boxes are always packed this way. You know, we did everything to, you know, you know, we've never done anything Cuban in Drew Estate. Okay. It's not who we are as a company, but Willie is genuinely Cuban. So we wanted to do something that was a reflection of Willie. And uh, I think Herrera Esteli is going to be, uh, I think it's a wonderful testament to who he is, and I think it's a cigar that's going to find a lot of favor with a lot of people. Uh, I, have, I have really high hopes for it. I'm, I'm really, I'm very impressed, particularly with the, uh, the small the small Corona Gorda, and the Lonsdale size is really a super duper taste. What else we got here? Hmm, oh, well, you know, we added a couple sizes to my Uzi Ways a ton. I mean, a lot of guys are heard about the bait fish. You know, bait fish was originally made for just one single store, um, but, you know, we got so much demand for it. We ended up, uh, we're doing 
we're doing a nationwide release on it. You know, it's a four by forty-four. You know, for me personally, my Uzi is just too big. You know, you know like those sixty ring gauge cigars, they make me feel like a gay porn star. I just can't do them. So, you know. But in this smaller size, this slightly stronger blending, I really enjoy the bait fish. It's a nice smoke. But I think it's one, again, you know, it's, it's meant more for your, your experienced smoker, you know? And then we got another size coming out called Plus 11, and that's a more traditional. It's like a 5.5 by 52 Robusto, and the Mai Uzi weighs a ton. So that way people that typically like to smoke a Robusto can have that Uzi kind of smoking experience, but without the jawbreaker kind of style of cigar. And uh, a couple little odds and ends, you know, uh, you know, we got Fabian Ziegler, our national sales director. He likes a cigar, uh, it's like a dirt blend and natural in a Lawsdale size. It's called NDB. We're offering that to customers this year. So, you know, it's just kind of little bits and bobbles, adding little pieces. You know, Corona Viva, Papa Fritas, you know, showcasing Herrera S. Lee, but not really extending it yet until it's right. And then probably the only other thing that I got that's of note is I bought these killer tubes like two years ago, and we've never had enough cigars to put in them. Okay. And uh, I've been staring them at the factory for two years. So I think one way or the other, I think I'm going to put some Ligas in a tube. Because I know a lot of guys, the fact that, I love the fact that cigars aren't selling so they can breathe and age the way I want them to age. But at the same time, they're inconvenient. You know, when you got to go play golf, or you're going to a poker game, or you just want to go out in your car. So I think I'm going to put some uh, Toros in a tube and just uh, put them out there for people who want some uh, a little bit easier transportability. That's, that's all I got to say, man. Got, got any questions? Yeah, let's, uh, let me just ask you this. How did you, uh, how did you get into the business of cigar? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. You know, most guys work their way up in the business. I'm, I'm working my way down. You know, my first job was with Lou Roth. And, well, I worked with Lou directly for four years. Um, the way I got into cigars is the way you guys are into cigars. I, I was just a really avid, passionate cigar smoker. You know, I started in the, while well, I was in the Navy in the 80s. You know, when I got out of the Navy and I started having a little bit more coin, I started, you know, making trips to the Dominican and Honduras and, you know, going around and meeting cigar makers and, you know, back before there were any magazines, so it was really unusual for a fat gringo like me to, you know, go around and, because at that time, you know, cigar business was kind of a dying business and here was a, here was a relatively young guy at the time, you know, who was really interested, he was interested enough that he's like spending his own money to, you know, go to factories and whatnot, so what ended up happening is I became really good friends with a lot of the manufacturers and growers and they were very open with their information because nobody ever wanted to talk to them before and I learned a tremendous amount and the cigar boom came and everybody just assumed I would get in the cigar business but uh, you know I really had no interest in it um, you know I, I, was, I was enjoying my life I was retired I sold a company I just liked smoking cigars and I had started you know online doing this website thing and, and it was just really it was fun, and it wasn't until 2000 when one of my good friends, Lou Rockton, you know, said, hey, you should come work with me, and uh, I have to tell you, Lou was more than generous, and uh, it really surprised me, and I, he almost made me, I couldn't say no, and uh, I'm glad I didn't, because I learned a lot working with Lou for four years, you know, I, I knew a lot about cigars, and I knew a lot about tobacco, but Lou really taught me the business, and it's really very different, you know, there's a lot of guys that are great sales guys, and a lot of guys that are great tobacco men, and a lot of guys that are great businessmen. There's very, very few people that know the business, they know the tobacco, they know the cigar, the manufacturing, and uh, so, you know, being with Lou, it really helped to round out my own experience. And uh, when Lou sold to Altidus, I kind of retired again, and then uh, crazy Jonathan Drew said, hey, you want to be president of Drew Estate? I'll make you a partner. No money. In. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound too shabby. Not too bad, right? And uh, so, you know, so here I am, seven years later. I'm, I'm still with Drew, and, uh, you know, God bless. We've been growing, man. People, uh, people seem to be enjoying what we're making, and, you know, we're enjoying making it. And, you know, we're trying to widen our offerings out, but not, you know, get away from who we are. You know, you know, most.
most, you know, most guys, you know, I'm not an acid smoker. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't make any bones about it. But you know, we put our heart and soul into making that practice as good as possible for the guys who are. You know what I mean? Same thing with the tobacco smokers, the natural smokers. And it's the same thing with the traditional stuff. You know, we're just trying to do the very best we can, and uh, it all stems from the heart. We, we just genuinely cigar geeks ourselves. You know what I mean? So. Awesome. See, this has been an honor, man. Let me just ask you a quick question real quick. What do you think about the cigar news, the social media explosion right now in this time? Of you know, it's really weird because what you guys are doing today is kind of what I was doing in the mid-90s. It wasn't called a blog. You know, I had this crappy website that we used to just code directly in HTML. Um, I don't... I just think it's the natural progression. I don't think it's something that you can have an opinion or a non-opinion about. It, it's just a fact. And for me, I like it because it gives us a chance in more avenues and more ways to share information about what we make. And, you know, look, there's good parts about it and there's bad parts about it. But I think there's way more good than there's bad. And it's totally irrelevant because it is. Sure. And, you know, and as long as guys like you, you know, go out of your way and put things together, and, you know, I think it benefits everybody. I think it benefits us as a manufacturer. I think it benefits the consumer because they learn more directly from a horse's mouth. Exactly. I think it also benefits the retailer in the middle because I think it brings guys into a store, you know, to look for new products, things that they wouldn't otherwise know about because it's impossible to get everything out to everybody you want. You know, we're so busy trying to make cigars that sometimes the marketing of them or the information about them, it lags behind. So whether it be blogs or whether it be just using forum groups or whether it be on Facebook, all those things are just another brick in helping us connect with consumers and just connect with other cigar smokers. And ultimately, cigar smoker is about camaraderie. And so for me, it's, I love it. You know? Perfect day for you. You're chilling out. What's the first cigar out of all these you're going to pick up? Well, this morning it was... Uh, I've been trying to work on an alternative blend to Dirty Wrap. So, um, it started off as a simple idea to make a black rat, a Maduro Dirty Wrap. But it just didn't taste as good when I just slapped some Maduro wrapper on it. So then we started tweaking with the blend. And like 12 blendings later, we got to a point where I really like it. But it isn't a Dirty Rat anymore. So, I got a cigar I love, but I don't know what to call it yet. You know, I'm still trying to that's, figure that's that out. Got right that's what you're smoking there, you know. It's a little young, but, you know, we slapped some number nine bands on it, but uh, it's really, it's not quite a number nine either. Okay. You know, we're still trying to figure it out. But most mornings, I like to start my day off with a dirty rat. Okay. A dirty rat and a double espresso. I mean, most people say that's a little bit too much. That's boldness right there, man. That's good stuff. I smoke 10 to 12 Liga Provadas every single day. Wow. Okay. I mean, I really do smoke these cigars. Kind of roll right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a very good price on them. Sure, helps, I have a you know? <laughs> Yeah. Steve, man, we appreciate it. No, this no. is an honor for me. It's no, an man, honor honor's all mine, man. Get this Thanks. stuff out to you guys. Guys, this is CigarNews.com. Hanging out with Steve Saka, Drew Estate. Thanks, guys.